One of the questions that people often ask you is, uh, what church do you go to? What denomination do you belong to? And I say, I'm a Baptist, been a Baptist for years. Now, when you go to Nashville, Tennessee, however, you've got a choice of so many different churches that you can go and visit. And on a number of visits that I've made to Nashville, I found the Cowboy Church. Are you saying that can't, that can't be a proper church? Well, let me assure you it is. Wonderful pastors, wonderful congregation, a phenomenal praise and worship band. And the pastors, two incredible people, Pastor Harry Yates and his wife Joanne. Now, Joanne, when you look at her, you go, actually, I think I know who she is. And she, of course, is Joanne Cash, the sister of Johnny Cash. Thank you for spending some time with us on A Very Tall Man. Well, thank you. I'm, she, and I'm glad you're in Nashville. It's lovely to be here. You and I shouldn't really stand together, should we? The, the height difference is too You too are big. so tall. <laughs> and you are so short. Well, Johnny was uh, very tall. My, both of our grandfathers were tall and, and slender. And my daddy was 5'7". My mother was 5'9". So they kind of look like Mutt and Jeff together. <laughs> So how tall was Johnny Cash? Johnny Cash was six foot three barefooted. But when he put on those boots that he wore on stage, you had to, it was about six, about six, you know, six, six. I had to look up at Johnny like that. You know. Tell me about the Cowboy Church, Joanne. How long have you been involved with that? And, and why is it even here? Well, we are in our 30th year as pastors of Nashville Cowboy Church. Um, we started, we were, we were on the road for, for 16 years, living in a bus, traveling from, to all 50 states. Then in 1990, uh, the Lord spoke to us. We were in uh, ministry in Canada, all from coast to coast, all over Canada. And the Lord spoke to my husband in the middle of the night, about 2.30 in the morning. And he said, I want you to cancel all the ministry, all the dates you have. And I want you to go back home to Nashville because Joanne's mother is going to come home to be with me within a year. Now, my mother wasn't even sick. And uh, Harry told me that, that the Lord had spoken to him and, and told me about my mom. And I, of course, I cried. I said, she's not even sick. So we, long story short, we got back to Nashville, canceled all the meetings, and not one pastor was upset about it. They understood totally. And we, we knew that was God, that they would understand. How did you come up with the name The Cowboy Church? Well, I'm about to tell you. We, when <laughs> I we should got, have waited. When we, got, when we got to Nashville, uh, Nashville has hundreds of churches. And Harry came to me one morning and he said, the Lord has spoke to me that we're going to start a church in Nashville. I said, why? There are so many churches. Why do we need another one? He said, well, we're going to call it Nashville Cowboy Church. I said, what? I said, why? He said, well, I was raised on a ranch in West Texas. I don't even own a three-piece suit. I, I don't like dressing up. I want to wear Western clothes, cowboy boots, jeans, and a cowboy hat. And he said, I've talked to the Lord about it, and we're going to call it Nashville Cowboy Church. And I said, let me pray. He said, you pray about it. So I began to pray about it. Then a little, a few, few days later, he said, we're going to start the church in a bar. And I said, well, I hope you have a good time. <laughs> I said, uh, the Lord delivered me out of bars in 1970. He said, no, you pray about it. He said, that's where the lost are. But what, what it ended up to be uh, was just a room we were using that was, there was no drinks or anything in there. We were just using the room. It had a stage and the barmaids that worked there kept getting saved kept giving their hearts to the Lord, and they had a turnover of help on a constant basis. Uh, Budweiser even wanted to sponsor us to be on television. <laughs> and uh, my husband That's said, good. no, I don't think we can go that way. <laughs> 
Head can, joke. Can I take you back a little bit? You said that um, when uh, Harry said that he wanted to do it in the bar, you said no, 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 because you were, you were in that life before. So was there a period in your life that you weren't saved? Oh my goodness, yes. I didn't give my heart to the Lord till 1970. October the 18th, I was a, a drug addict and an alcoholic. Um, my story is long. I'll try to hit some highlights. Uh, I'm next to youngest of seven in the Cash family. Johnny's right in the middle. Uh, and three of us in our family sing, my brother Tommy, and of course Johnny and myself. I've recorded uh, 30 albums and working on album 31 and mine are all gospel. Johnny and Tommy, of course, sing country and have recorded gospel. Um, but I was living in, uh, uh, I married early, went through a divorce in Houston, Texas. Uh, so, so much is involved. I have a movie on my life, I do believe. It's a documentary on my life. So you, you say that you, uh, there's a movie coming out uh, the, the, oh, it's already yeah, out, okay, yeah. yeah. If you look at the movie about Johnny Cash, the one that I Walk the Line. Walk the Line, yes. Uh, I found that quite a moving movie, especially the, the description of when your brother um, died in that accident in, it was in, terrible. in the sawmill. It was terrible. If I found it so terrible, and I'm not related to you guys, how must it have been for you watching that on TV? Well, it was uh, the way that the movie people portrayed the accident and his passing was exactly the way it happened. Jack was uh, 14 years old and he'd been called to preach. He loved the Lord, uh, was a true witness for Jesus. And on a Saturday morning, uh, when Jack was 14, Johnny was 12, um, Jack had a job to make three extra dollars to help mama with the groceries. And as he was sawing some fence post, pushing the fence post into the saw, the saw jerked and it jerked him into the saw. He lived eight days in our little country hospital. And as he was going out to be with the Lord, he pointed to angels in the hospital room and said, Mama, can't you see the angels? They're standing right by you. And he went home to be with the Lord Johnny was, we all were heartbroken, but Johnny and Jack were inseparable. And you don't ever get over that kind of death. Uh, it was a horrible way to go. For, for Johnny, um, we know his life, and it also, like yours, had, had drugs and stuff in it. Um, people, I guess, ask you, did Johnny also love the Lord? Was he a born again? Oh, he loved believer? Jesus with all his heart. Now he went down the wrong road uh, uh, several years with the drug addictions and should have died a hundred times, but the prayers of God's people and especially my family and especially my mother, we prayed constantly for Johnny that the Lord would spare his life and would lead him back on the right path. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, Johnny's story is told in Walk the Line movie, and there's a new movie being made in the process of it right now called Johnny Cash, The Redemption of an American Icon. I went to a concert of Johnny Cash's in New Zealand a number of years ago, and what was really amazing to me was that he introduced his pastor on the stage and he said, yes. this is my pastor he and had he, a pastor he travels with, with, with me. Why did he do that? Why did he have a pastor with him? Well, you know how this world is. And when you're traveling day by day, staying in a hotel, different hotel every night, and there's always people out there that want to get to you in some way that's not godly. Uh, Johnny chose to take uh, a pastor along with him. When Johnny was home, he had visited our church, the Nashville Cowboy Church, and he loved to hear Harry preach. He said, now this is a way that church ought to be. It's not what you wear, it's what's in your heart. One of the nice things about the Cowboy Church that I've enjoyed is that I haven't been there once where the pastor has not given an altar call. We always give an altar call because that's what it's all about, winning the lost. And uh, I don't know of a single service 
when someone hasn't given their heart to the Lord. Sometimes on, on occasions, there's up to 50 that will give their heart to the Lord at one time because my husband is a soul winner. He's a pastor and he's a preacher, preaches the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Now tell me, is this true? Was he the youth pastor yes. when you got saved? Yes, <laughs> he was the youth pastor. <laughs> That's great. And they had been praying for me for six months and I didn't even know them. Uh, the pastor at the church where we got saved was Jimmy Snow, the son of Hank Snow. But he was a powerful preacher too. And Harry was the youth leader. And on the Sunday morning that I took, gave my heart to the Lord, uh, Jimmy Snow, the pastor, led me to Jesus. And Harry was standing on the platform with the pastor laughing at me. But I, I found out later they were laughing for me because they had prayed for me so long. Was it a, a miraculous conversion? Because you it said was. before that you it was. It had was a, drink a or whatever. It was a awesome move of the Holy Spirit in my life. Uh, the enemy had told me that I was too bad to be saved, but I was no worse than any other sinner. And I remember when uh, the pastor led me to Jesus through the sinner's prayer. I felt a warmth cleanse me and nobody had to ask me, are you born again? I know I am. It was a cleansing and a forgiveness and the joy that I had never felt. Was it difficult to give up the things that you had been doing before? No, Jesus set me free. Like that was it? That was it. I never had a desire for him anymore. So how long has it been since you've, you've had a drink? October the, the 18th, 1970. You can remember the date, is that specific? I can remember 10 minutes to 12. Really? Noon. Yeah. One of the other things, I guess, uh, being in the Cash family and being involved with music and very much you know, uh, to do with music here in the United States, you would have got to meet famous, famous people. Yes. Is there any truth to the story that you've spent time with Elvis Presley? Absolutely. I met Elvis. Johnny took me to one of his shows in his early career, and uh, we were living on the farm at the time, our farm, and he came in his first Cadillac he had bought. And he always called me baby because I'm the baby's sister. He said, baby, you want to go with me to a show? And so we drove for an hour from our farm to Jonesboro, Arkansas. He On the way over there, he said, now, I have a young man that's going to come out and front the show, and then they're going to bring this star on. I said, what's fronting the show? He said, that's where someone comes out and sings and gets the crowd going and gets them excited, and then the star is going to come out. I, I said, who's the star? He said, that's me. I said, you're my brother. He said, well, I am the star, baby. <laughs> so Elvis opened Elvis was opened that Johnny. guy that yeah. came out. So. The girls were going crazy over Elvis, and when he came out, came off the stage, and Johnny went on the stage, instead of watching Johnny's show, I went back and talked to Elvis for an hour. And what was and he, he like? Kissed my hand. Uh, he was the most good-looking man I have ever seen in my life, except my husband, of course. Goes without saying, Joanne. And uh, he was very kind, very courteous. He was older than me, but he called me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. He was very uh, flirty. But also, he had a heart for gospel music, didn't he? He was raised in a, a Christian home in a Assembly of God church, yes. Uh, I, I'm not his judge, so I don't know. God is the judge of us all. Uh, but I know he was raised to believe and to know Jesus is Lord. Someone called him one time the king. He said, no, there's only one king, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm looking forward to all of us being together one day in heaven. So, Joanne, when you look back over the years and uh, the life lived before and the life lived now, it, it seems so different. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, I have no desire for uh, things that, fill my life before Jesus. 
All I want to do now is please Him and serve Him, and He's the Lord of my life. Can you understand that some people may think it's difficult to be a Christian in this day and age with everything that's going on? It's a choice. It's a choice. You can, uh, uh, you, you, we have choices when we get up in the morning. We, we have a choice whether to get up in the morning. And all through the day we have choices. I choose to serve Jesus. I choose to study His Word. I choose to be a good wife to my husband. I choose to co-pastor the church with Him and lead others to Jesus, to counsel with people and help them to stay on the right track. And it takes a lot of prayer on my part and on my husband's part, uh, but it's a choice. I mean, I know Jesus saved me. I know I'm forgiven. And one of our prayers, we pray daily every morning when we have, my Harry and I have a morning devotion, is we ask Jesus to forgive us of anything that we don't know about, that we've not pleased the Lord. And this is one line I wished every Christian would say, Lord, I forgive everybody and everything that could possibly need my forgiveness and mean it. Forgiveness is a very difficult thing though, isn't it? Well, uh, it, again, it's a choice. It's a choice and I choose to forgive people because that's, that sets me free. What about the 70 times seven thing? Does, do you sometimes have to keep coming back and ask for forgiveness for the same thing? I or? think that scripture means uh, never ending. Just forgive people constantly. Forgive yourself. A lot of people have trouble forgiving ourselves. Uh, but Jesus forgave me, so I forgive me too. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Did you ever have conversations about things of the Lord with Johnny? Always. Harry and I talked about, talked with Johnny. Uh, when he got off of the road, when he quit touring in 94, uh, we would go over to, we did about 10 minutes from him. And we'd go over to his house two or three times a week. And uh, he loved to hear Harry preach and talk about the Word. We'd talk about, all Johnny wanted to do was talk about the Word of God and read the Word and pray and talk about heaven. One of my last conversations I had with Johnny uh, on one of those days, uh, I knew it was getting close to the time when the Lord was going to take him home. And I said, John, I, I, I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you. How are you about the end of life? And he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, baby, it's the hardest part physically because he was really sick. But he said, I can't hardly wait to be with Jesus and to be with our family that's gone on. He said, you do what God called you to do. I'm going home. You've recorded over 30 albums. Yes. Do any of them have some of the great old hymns in them? Yes, I have a live album with Johnny that he did with me he comes in about halfway and does the rest of it with me. It was in a church with a 35 voice choir and we sang Precious Memories and How Beautiful Heaven Must Be, Blessed Assurance and all those songs. It was wonderful. How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. That is one of the great songs, isn't it? Yes, it is. What a day that will be. What a day yeah. that will be when our Jesus we will see. Yeah. I believe it was written uh, for, uh, for the, 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 the writer's mother-in-law who was, who was dying at the time. And uh, just wonderful words. My dad loved that song too. Yes. And, and uh, he would try, he, he died recently, he was 94 and his voice was starting to get really, really quaky. But you could almost see the face light up at the end. Yeah. So the, 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 the hymn writers, do they, do they get you going? Do they serve you and say yes? Here's another wonderful hymn to sing. Well, you know, sometimes uh, we have sung those hymns, all of us, so many times in churches that sometimes they are just words. But since I've been born again, since I've been saved, Blessed Assurance, that song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. And He is. He's mine. They mean so much more to me, the words of those hymns, 
because I, I mean it when yeah. I sing it. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Eh? Foretaste of glory divine. Amen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so do you sing hymns in your Sunday church or is it, is it cowboy music that you sing? Well, no, we don't sing cowboy music. Uh, we sing songs about cowboys, but it's gospel music. Uh, I sing songs off of my albums. I'm singing a song this Sunday called Don't Knock, Just Walk On In When We Get To Heaven if you're born again. And uh, Far Side Banks of Jordan, I'm singing that this Sunday. And that's a song that John and June sang. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be waiting for you on the Far Side Banks of Jordan. You talked a wee bit earlier that it, it really life is a series of choices. You wake it up is. in the morning and, and you make choices. Yeah. But it seems to me that for a lot of people today, there are a lot more choices than there might have been, say, even 30 yeah. or 40 years ago. Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, when, when I was in high school, when Johnny was in high school, the worst thing that our little town found out about was that some young man had the audacity to smoke a cigarette behind the school building. <laughs> How far we've come into the whirly things, but things are so different now. Yes, they are, because I believe that we're living so close to the coming of the Lord. And uh, what we do for Jesus, we've got to do it now. So how important is it that each day we, we do take the opportunities or even look for the opportunities because maybe yes. we're not doing that? Yes. I believe with all my heart, my husband preached on this the other night at church, that as I was telling you before we started, the Lord will put people in our path every day uh, on purpose. How many times have you met someone that you hadn't seen in a while and they started talking to you and you knew that they needed the Lord. God will put people in our path and we've got to be ready to be that witness, not to be pushy, but to show them the love of Christ. Do you think that you have an advantage being you know, like a, a famous country singer in America well, when it comes to sharing the gospel? People have asked me that uh, over the years and I have to say, yes, I am. A cash. I'm in the. I'm. I'm in the cash family. I'm Johnny Cash's youngest sister, and God has used that to get us into places where ordinarily we might not be able to go. But God uses it for His glory. Uh, I don't think I'm uh, better than anybody. I'm certainly not, but I am born again, and I am Johnny Cash's sister. <laughs> what influence did your mum and dad? have over your life and, and your Christian life in particular? My mother was the first one to tell me about Jesus as a child uh, and she was a very godly woman. My daddy uh, gave his heart to the Lord many years later, actually uh, the day that Jack passed away. Jack said, will you meet me in heaven, daddy? And he gave his heart to the Lord in the hospital. Uh, but my mother was, uh, I guess you would call her the the, the strong one. She was the, the, pra one. the praying mum. Yeah, she was the praying mother. She prayed constantly all day and at night until she went to sleep. Uh, she was a very strong Christian. She would tell you just exactly what she thought about you too. <laughs> but I guess she was also proud of the successes that, that yes. you guys had in the world. Yes. She'd, uh, someone would ask her, say, oh, I know you're proud, for, proud of Johnny. She'd say, I've got the rest of my family that I'm just as proud of. Uh, all of us had different kinds of careers. Um, uh, I had a brother, my oldest brother, invented the cruise control for Chrysler in Memphis. Uh, I had a sister that was a Bible teacher. And uh, uh, of course, Jack passed away, then Johnny and his career. Then my sister Reba was Johnny's business manager for over 30 years. And then there's me, I'm a pastor's wife and a singer. And my brother Tommy, who's the youngest, is also a singer and sounds just like Johnny. So your mother was a praying mother. Did she realize and understand what gifted children she had, in particular, say Johnny? Yes, I remember standing in the kitchen in, on our farm. And that's about the uh, 16 years old, 16 or 17. It's when young men's voices change. And we were, we saw Johnny out in the yard 
and we heard this deep voice. And my mother said, what is that? And I said, that's Johnny. So she called him in the kitchen and she said, son, was that you? And he said, yes, mother, I'm going to sing. Mama, I'm going to sing. So my mother laid her hand on his shoulder and said, God has a calling on your life and you have a gift and you will sing and you will be great. Johnny did a, there's a new video out on Johnny's life and you need to look it up and it's called The Gift. And it's from that statement my mother made. Joanne Cash, it's been a gift to have you on the program. Thank you very much for taking time here in Nashville to join us on a very tall man. God bless you and your husband Harry as you continue to minister with the Cowboy Church. And if you are ever in Nashville, please know that you have a, an invitation to join them on Sunday morning. You will not regret it. God bless you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.